In this presentation, we will take a look at part one of our C Corporation comprehensive problem. This time we're going to be reviewing the data that we're going to be using in order to populate our comprehensive problem for a C Corporation, implementing that data into the form 1120. Here is our form 1120. We're going to be entering the data into this form. To do this, we're going to be using Lacert Tax software. If you don't have Lacert Tax software, we will provide the tax forms in PDF format as well. And you can find the forms on the IRS website at irs.gov. We're also going to be using an Excel worksheet in order to organize our thoughts so that we can then populate that information into the form 1120. With regards to the Excel worksheet, we're going to have on the left hand side the information that we can imagine that comes from our accounting system or from the client. So in essence, that's going to be our financial statements, including the balance sheet and the income statement or profit and loss statement we're going to have the beginning year and the prior year in terms of the balance sheet we're going to take that information and we're going to put it into a, um, a trial balance so we're actually going to convert that information back into a trial balance type format the reason we want to do that is because it's easier to work with a with a debit and credit format than a plus and minus format this is a step that just about every kind of tax preparation firm will typically be using. They may not use Excel. They might have some other software to implement into this. I've used other software for this kind of setup. However, Excel, in my opinion, is the best because it's the most transparent. It might take a little bit more time to set up in terms of the data input process. But in, in terms of transparency to see what is going on, Excel is very useful to do. I think it's the best thing to use. Our approach is then to take our balance sheet and income statement to populate that into the unadjusted trial balance. If we have any adjustments that we need to then make in order to make the books correct, then we would do the adjusting entries here. We'll have one of them. We're not gonna do a lot of adjusting entries because that's something that we would consider in, in basically financial accounting. So we do have courses on financial accounting and adjusting entries. If you're talking about smaller uh, companies, then it could be the case that they're dependent on the CPA firm to some degree to do adjusting entries at the end of the time period. Uh, what we're going to be focusing in on here is then taking that adjusted trial balance and then converting that or making entries that will then have the change or adjustment to the tax trial balance. So that's where our focus will be. And many of those changes then will be in terms of the M1s. So M1 type of adjustments that we'll see on the tax return. In other words, if we go to the actual tax return here, now, if we take a look at the 1120, the first page is going to be basically an income statement. We're, we're looking at the income statement because we're going to be paying taxes on the income. And then the last page does have the balance sheet. If we go to page six, we have schedule L, which is the balance sheet showing beginning and ending balance sheet balances. The confusing component, uh, the most confusing component is generally going to be these M1 adjustments that we have down here. And, and the reason is because this is going to be the difference, the changes between the tax balance and the book balance. So the tax code has its own basically accounting methods or accounting rules that will be involved. Those will typically differ from general accounting rules and therefore we're gonna have a difference between our financial statements and the tax return. We want a systematic way in order to record those differences. We need to understand those differences and, and what exactly is being reported on the tax return so that we can enter this properly. Our goal then is to enter our information into the tax return in a very systematic type of way. We want a step-by-step -step kind of way in a similar way as we might put together financial statements. We have a similar problem as with financial statements in that if we do not have a systematic way of, of entering the financial statements, creating the balance sheet, for example, and, and it becomes not in balance, then we have to start basically all over again. We have to check every number. What we'd like to do is set up a system so that we can we can put uh, our information in place and if there's an error we can kind of fall back to the last point in time that we knew we were in balance rather than going back to step one this is very useful if we're entering the return because it could this is a type of return that can take all day and it's useful if you're working with a supervisor as well because then you can really give them something that that is worth that has value to it right because you can put something and you can say hey this is where i am at this point in time I don't know this particular step, but I know exactly where I am at this time and I need help with this step rather than, hey, I've tried to put all this in at the same time and the thing doesn't balance and I don't know what to do and there's no real uh, possibility to do anything other than just basically start over. So for both those reasons, we want to set up a systematic uh, setup on how to enter the data. So for example, here in an Excel worksheet then, uh, we would be showing the book values and the income uh, and the tax value. 
So the book value, for example, would be here on our worksheet. We'll calculate that. And then the tax value will be over here at the 1199939. And, that, and that'll give us a, a more transparent way to understand the M1. So every time we go through an M1, we'll actually enter it into the tax return. We'll start from a point in time that we are in balance. We'll enter the M1 kind of like a journal entry into the tax return. Then we'll remain in balance. Then we'll see it in a journal entry format in a more transparent way to see that distinction and separation from the uh, financial statements to the M1 adjustments. So our basic approach here that we're going to be taking as we go through this is first, we'll enter our information into the unadjusted trial balance from the balance sheet and income statement. Now, sometimes you will actually have a trial balance and that'll make it a bit easier, but a lot of book problems won't have this. Uh, they'll, you know, they'll just give you a balance sheet and income statement. And uh, even in practice, you probably you oftentimes might just get a balance sheet and income statement. Very useful to be able to take a balance sheet and income statement and convert it back to debit and credit, which is kind of the reverse thing that we would do from financial accounting where, where we take the, the trial balance and convert it to the financial statements. So first we'll do that. Then we'll think about any adjustments that we need to make to the book balances to make them correct to get to the adjusted trial balance. Then we're going to take these numbers and we're actually going to feed them into the tax return. So we'll take the, the book numbers and page one, which typically results in the tax uh, taxable income, not the book income. We're going to make it work to the book income first because we're going to, that's our first step. So the first step is to do what, it, what we need to do to get to our book uh, number down here, our book net income number. And if we do that, if we get this to the book income number, and on page six, we eliminate any M1 adjustments that the software is going to try to put in place. We don't want any M1 adjustments yet because we want to analyze them one at a time. Then the balance sheet, and we get the balance sheet in there correctly, the balance sheet should be in balance. And we'll be in balance and we'll know we're in balance because these two numbers down below or, or the check number we'll have is that this retained earnings number will be, the, be dependent on the net income and the dividends. So that'll, that'll put us in balance there because the difference in the balance sheet will be the, the book balance. Then we'll, we'll analyze each M1 one at a time. So we'll take, we'll take down each M1 and we'll start from a point where we're in balance. We'll enter the M1 into the system and then uh, we'll finish in balance. And then we'll go back to our Excel worksheet and we'll show it in a more transparent way and tie out our net income numbers on a book basis and the net income on a tax basis. As we do this, note that the first M1 that we do is typically going to be the most difficult, and that's going to be dealing with depreciation. Depreciation has a few different uh, difficulties in it, in that we have a complex depreciation schedule in the system. We have to have a book depreciation and tax depreciation, and we're going to complicate that with the fact that we made a sale of a fixed asset. And the fixed asset had a sale and has a difference in accumulated depreciation from a book and tax basis. So the first step that we will do is, is figure out the depreciation, which is going to be the most complicated type of adjustment. Then we'll go to the rest of the M1s, and which will be uh, easier adjustments once we've uh, completed that first step. That's often the case that you have to do in the software because the software, if you're carrying the software over from the prior year, will already have the depreciation schedules in there. And therefore, it's going to try to populate some of this information for you already. And we got to figure out, well, how can we do this in a step-by-step -step method so we can know what is going on and be able to reflect it in our Excel sheet. Also note that the asset that we're going to be selling in terms of a fixed asset will be different in, from the S-Corporation problem in that it's not going to have the 179 deduction. So when we compare the two, some of the difference between the two, if you've taken the course in terms of the 1120S, the S-Corporation course, then we had a sale there that had a 179 deduction. Some of the difference here will be the fact that there wasn't, there's not a 179 uh, deduction involved in the sale that we'll make here. So we'll make a bit of a distinction between those two.